Hello everybody, Sanyar, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, as we're approaching the end of 2023 and as we are entering into the new year of 2024, I wanted to make this video on the predictions for 2024. And I believe I made a similar video last year around this time of the year. And I thought to myself, it would be fitting to do a similar video because there are a lot of things happening for 2024. But before I do that, it's a bit crazy that we're 2024. I don't know if you guys vibe with that statement that I just made, but man, like I remember like it was yesterday, 2020, 17, 2020, 2016, 2015, 2018. Those years, like, man, those are like six, seven, eight years in some cases. I mean, time goes fast, so fast, guys. It goes by so fast. I mean, man, you guys got to enjoy every single day, every single hour, minute of your life because, man, especially the younger folks watching our channel, and I'm not even that old, right? Uh, but obviously, I'm past my 20s there. I'm in my 30s now. But, man, like, time goes fast, really, really fast, guys. So you guys got to appreciate every single moment. But... Nonetheless, here, I want to talk about the predictions, okay? So, a couple of predictions I want to make. Some of them are obvious. Some of them, I think I'm making bold statements. Who knows? Uh, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are. So, definitely let me know in the comments below, guys. Uh, I definitely want to know what you guys think about these predictions. Make your own prediction. Do you agree with mine? Do you disagree? What are your own predictions? I'm really, really curious to hear yours. Uh, and it'd be good for other people to see your predictions, right? Because predictions allow you... The reason why predictions are so important, it's actually the scientific method. You always want to make hypotheses, right? You always want to make a hypo hypothesis. Because if you're not able to formulate a hypo hypothesis, then you probably don't really understand the landscape. You don't really understand what's going on. But when you start making these predictions, that means you have a, some sort of baseline understanding of CRISPR, of the landscape of CRISPR, of the companies involved, of the you know big pharma situation in healthcare and so on. So let's dive into it then. So first prediction, CRISPR therapeutics get beta thalassemia T TDT approved by March by the FDA. So this should be the first prediction for probably most people. Again, the FDA approved for sickle cell disease for the cas I program in December 8th. That was just for sickle cell disease. That program also tackled the other blood disorder, uh, which is beta thalassemia. Uh, and CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex provided amazing data for not just sickle cell disease, that program, but also for beta thalassemia. So there should be no reason for the FDA to reject it. The scheduled date, I believe, is end of March. I think it's going to happen before March, but who knows? I said approved uh, by March, uh, at least. So let's just fix that by March. Um, so... That's my first prediction. The second prediction is Cas Javi gets approved in Canada, Europe, and other regions. And I don't think this is a huge surprise. I think uh, the fact that it got approved in the early set of November by the UK, which obviously is a neighboring country of the Euro uh, European Union, which again used to be in the European Union Association just years ago, a few years ago. So uh, I think Europe is a safe play to assume. Uh, they already got some designations from Europe. So Canada, I think everything that the FDA does, in a sense, can help Canada sort of mimics. So I am not. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and of course, other regions. And I, I mean, other regions could be Australia, could be New Zealand, could be African regions. I mean, we already have a Middle East country, which is, of course, Bahrain. But I'm expecting other countries to approve it, maybe even a country in South America. Uh, we'll see where we go with that. But that those two predictions, I think most people, you know, are making or at least should be in uh, your radar. And now this is where we get into the more, uh, you know, the more unknown uh, space of it. So I'm going to put a space just to show that, you know, this these two should be at least universally agreed in this space or, you know, most of it at least. Uh, Beam releases positive data. People start doubling down on base settings. So we know Beam has started a clinical trial. We know they've dosed the patient. We know that they, we know they're enrolling patients. We're gonna get some data from Beam Therapeutics, of course, for Beam One Hundred Two. So we'll see what happens with that. I think it's gonna go really, really well. I think 
The data is going to be amazing because, again, they're tackling sickle cell disease through ex vivo, but now through base editors. And by nat nature, base editors are more efficient than CRISPR-Cas9, which is the first generation of CRISPR, which, again, Cas Java is using. Um, so, again, with all the preclinical papers, all the data showing that base editors are more efficient in this case when you're comparing ex vivo and you're putting ex vivo for, for both uh, in parallels for CRISPR-Cas9 and base editors. So the data is going to be so positive that I think people are going to start doubling down on base editing. And I think it's going to, I, I really expect this. And, I, and this is one of the bold predictions I'm making. I think people are already talking about how base editors and prime editors are superior than CRISPR-Cas9. But I think in 2024, you're going to get that sentiment that people are going to start, you know, literally calling CRISPR-Cas9, you know, dangerous. And not just inefficient but dangerous because you have now a technology that's able to provide much more efficiency and safety uh, and not have that uh, 1% trans, trans off side offset edit that you know even Dr. Sam, CEO of CRISPR Therapeutics mentioned. So I expect this to happen somehow throughout the year. I don't think this will impact the FDA decision on beta thalassemia. Absolutely not. Uh, if it did, they would have never have to prove sickle cell disease just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but who knows, right? So that's one of my predictions. Another prediction I'm making is more from Caribou. I think Caribou has been sort of quiet since like about August, September when they released their last, last set of data. The last set of, the first, they released two sets of data. The first set of data, people were really happy, pumped up, positive. The stock went way up. Like it really, really had a nice run up. Second set of data was a little bit disappointing pointing if i may say although i would say it was well above average the industry average it was still a, a little bit disappointing because you, we had hopes that crispr in the car t space could have a high durability and a complete response rate uh over time over over six months right and that second data set of data didn't really approve that in fact if it did it sort of proved that it was better than the average which again the market average is extremely important to beat that average um but to say that, you know, you're, you, you know, to say that the data was amazing and uh, we're all fully bullish on it, I think that's, that's an overstatement. I think we were a little bit, a few people got skeptical. But I think the next set of data, I think people are, are going to accept the fact that this CAR T space uh, is a very tough space. Cancer is a very, very tough thing to battle with. Uh, and there's a reason why there's literally no cure. But I think CBO10 will provide a good insight, the third set of data. I think people are going to like it, but then people are going to say, look, it's better than the average. It's not perfect, uh, but we're giving it a pass. And I think people are going to start liking it. It's going to change the narrative. And I think that discussion will go throughout the year. I think CAR-T is an important space uh, because that is really the battle of cancers, different levels of cancers. Of course, there's leukemia. Uh, there's so many ca different cancers. So I want to make sure I'm not putting everything in the same basket here, but I think the battle of cancers with CRISPR, I think that discussion will, will play out really, really, um, uh, really hard, right? It'll be a big topic for many experts, many scientists in the space. Uh, my next prediction here is Editas gets bought out by Big Pharma. I think Editas, I think things have not been working out, change of leadership over time, different leaders, not just the CEO, but the chief medical officers, I believe. Different people have just been switching up in the company. And I think Big Pharma, with what happened in in November and December in the UK and the US with the FDA, for example, approving crispr tablets cas Java for sickle cell disease and what's about to happen by March, I think a big pharma company is going to be like, you know what, we don't want to start our own division. Let's just buy out a company like Editas, get some CRISPR talent, get some CRISPR IP. Editas does hold IP. I want to remind viewers that they do hold IP in the US. So that's something that they could leverage those uh, big pharma company. And plus, you know, you got to remember, like, let's let's say the, the big pharma, like, I don't know, I'm just giving an example. You know, let's say Moderna or Pfizer buys Editas. They're going to buy it at what? At a premium of like three, four billion. Um, their stock price, just for the fact they're dub doubling down in CRISPR, could jump another four or five billion. So in a sense, they literally, within the Sims, within 24 hours, they would have paid back in a sense. Uh, their purchase obviously doesn't work like that, but I think you understand what I mean there. So... I think this is going to happen. I don't think Editas is going to stay as a standalone company. They're the oldest company, or one of the oldest, rather. Caribou is the oldest, actually. 
Uh, they're one of the oldest company in the CRISPR landscape, one of the oldest public companies in the CRISPR landscape. Unfortunately, things have not played out well for them, but they do hold talent. They do hold CRISPR history. They do hold CRISPR IP uh, that, you know, a big pharma company could definitely, definitely uh, use. Again, they some of these big pharma companies have cash in the balance sheet. So uh, CRISPR being a, now a well-known technology, hitting the mainstream, being well-proven, there is a commercial viability to it. I think there's a play to that. So, and I want to remind viewers, Editas is not using CRISPR-Cas9. It's uh, crispr Therapeutics. They're actually using CRISPR-Cas12, I believe. Um, but anyways, my last prediction here for this video, at least, uh, maybe I'll make another video, another set of predictions. Who knows? Uh, I think the, my next prediction here, and I think a lot of people are not expecting this one. I think Pfizer doubles down on CRISPR. So if you guys remember in early 2022, I remember I was not even in the country when I made that video. It was January, like the second, first or second week of January. Pfizer announced they were partnering up with Beam, giving, you know, upfront payment, receiving milestone for a particular program uh, that they'll be working on in the following years. Uh, I think they're doubling down on CRISPR. I think they'll double down on CRISPR. I think Pfizer's under pressure from their investors. Uh, likewise, Moderna and all these big pharma companies um, especially after the pandemic, things have gone south for obviously everybody knows that uh, in terms of sales, in terms of revenue, in terms of profits. I think Pfizer with all that cash that they accumulated will double down on CRISPR. Now, whether or not they'll double down on Beam, who knows? Uh, they did sign up some exclusive stuff with them, I believe, um, on their end. So I'm not sure if they're even allowed to partner up with another company. Um, but if they do, I do expect them to venture out. Um, if it, they cannot partner with another company, I think they just double down with Beam. They give more money up front. Uh, they, you know, increase their stake in the CRISPR, uh, in the CRISPR race. And I'm putting Pfizer here, but the same story goes to any other big company like Regeneron, which already is involved with NTLA. Uh, in fact, I'm making a prediction right now on this spot, which I should have wrote that. I think Regeneron here. Uh, give me a second, guys. Let me just. Uh, my mic down here because I'm carrying my mic. It seems more professional when I do that. I think Regeneron um, doubles down on NTLA programs, NTLA 2002 specifically. So NTLA 2001 is partnered up with Regeneron, but NTLA 2002 is not. And that program is fully owned by NTLA Therapeutics. And I think after what happened in the last few weeks, Regeneron is going to go back to their partner, NTLA, and say, hey, NTLA, we want to buy now NTLA 2002. We're ready for that. You got amazing data anyways for NTLA 2002. We're ready to pay for a premium to partner up with you, either with a 50-50 deal or a 60-40 deal like Vertex and Castravi uh, and, Ver um, and CRISPR Therapeutics. So we'll see what happens with that. Again, I can't make specific predictions with percentage and numbers, but I do know this is going to happen. I have a strong feeling that this is going to happen only because of you know the fact that CRISPR is now a proven technology. It is, right? The fact is the CRISPR can now be commercial. The fact is Regeneron is already in CRISPR landscape with NTLA 2001. And the fact is that NTLA 2002 is an amazing program with amazing data. Uh, and of course, using a set of technology that no other company is doing in vivo. No one's doing that with proven human data. NTLA 2002 has it. For a rare disease like HAE, I think uh, companies like Regeneron, Pfizer, Moderna are going to be looking at those that type of programs like hawks right so i per fully fully predict this to happen i should have wrote this down earlier i, I completely forgot to wrote the, uh, write that down uh, but there are of course other com predictions too you could be making i mean what happens with verve what happens with prime medicine what happens with um i think graphite bio goes bankrupt or they go they get bought out uh again same story here right editas or graphite bio uh, I, I could like uh, GRPH, whatever their stock price is, uh, Graphite Bio. Um, so I, I expect Graphite Bio to also be brought, bought out. I, I don't think they're going to survive standalone. Again, I think the, there are going to be some uh, buyers in the market here, especially with the reputation CRISPR had recently. But uh, So I think there's a couple of predictions you can make. I think some of them are bold. Some of them are obvious. Some of them are a uh, little bit far-fetched. But I think there's certain predictions you can make. And again, I want to remind viewers, these predictions, you know, it's very likely you're wrong, right? If I look back at my predictions from last year, I'm pretty sure I was wrong with a couple of things there. Uh, I was right about the FDA approvals. So that's that's what it is for that. Um, but, you know, there were a couple of things I was obviously wrong with. 
I think I actually made a prediction saying there's going to be more pharma companies, big pharma investing in CRISPR. And I don't really think 2023 was that year. But then again, 2023, interest rates went up. Stock market was volatile. Companies were sort of, you know, cutting down on on, on, on workforce and I'm not so sure if 20, it was more, I'm not sure if it was more a bad prediction or more of a, you know, macro environment that caused the prediction to go south. So who knows what happened this year, guys. So lots of things have been said here in the past 15 minutes. Let me know, guys, what do you guys think about your prediction? Let me know. I'm curious to hear about you guys. I'm always reading your comments, always responding to them. And as always, guys, subscribe if you're not. Like this video if you found value. Do like it. It does help this video get to people on pages on YouTube. It really, really does, guys. Please do like it. Subscribe, like I said. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know your predictions. Thank you.